teaching consultant Kevin Tate works all over South Africa helping teachers improve their technique. Today he's visiting Queen's High School in Johannesburg, the school where he started his career as a teacher almost 40 years ago. Right, morning guys. Right, first thing to sort out. You all aware of the test on Thursday? Yeah. Don Watson is a confident, popular maths teacher but he is keen to improve his classroom skills. Kevin is here to observe a grade 12 maths literacy lesson. And you know the usual story? I ask questions, you answer, am I right? Okay. I'm gonna particularly focus on, come guys, you're late, you're late, you're late. The lesson is filmed for a feedback session the next day. Yeah, just find place anyway. Morning, Don. Thank you. How are you feeling this morning? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks very much for volunteering to participate in this program. I hope it's really something that's going to be constructive for, for you and for me as we both learn together about what happened inside your classroom the other day. Okay. But there are a couple of things. If we just take the lesson in sequence, maybe we can pick up as we go sure. along. Yeah, just find place. Right. I'm going to focus on distance and time. Who wants to tell me what is the relationship? Listen to the question. What is the relationship between distance and time? In ordinary terms. Direct or indirect proportion, I'll help you. Ah, one person at a time. One person at a time. Put your hand up. Yes, Buta. It's direct. Why is it direct? Can somebody else tell me why is it direct? Keenan, why is it direct? The further I travel, the more time I take. Nice. Just uh, run me through what you see there, Don. I th the introduction, I think, um, I wanted to get them, and I think this is also setting the pace. Mm. It's always important to get them uh, into business as soon as you can. Uh, I thought the start was a little bit ragged. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's almost inevitable in the classroom environment which one's dealing. So one has to maybe overcompensate for it even. So to get the classroom sit down focusing on you and then beginning stating your intentionality and moving from there. I think that would help set the tone okay. for you. Yes. So the, perhaps maybe re just getting the whole thing back together again and on board. Yeah. Okay. I want you to draw a graph for me, but use the margin of your, of your page as the y-axis and then count for me. Let's make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll make it one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Make it one centimeter increments. Do the same here. And we'll make this one time. We'll make this one distance. Now, I was sitting right at the back, and I found those instructions quite confusing. I know. Um, looking at it now, actually, it even looks faster than what I intended it to be. <laughs> Just, uh, let's just look at some of the technical aspects of that, uh, which would have not been affected by what you've just told me now, mm -hmm. is that um, I couldn't read the green. Yes. So it's a bad color to use. Uh, maybe you've got to find, sometimes that's all you have available and you didn't have a chalkboard. Mine is untidy, yours won't be, am I right? Yes. yes. And your comment about uh, the quality of your board work, would you like to just uh, yes. unpack that for me a little bit? <laughs> it's the it's, it's all over the show. It's messy, actually, if I must be honest. But uh, it's, it's something I've come to expect from my students, and I think I'm, I'm sounding like I'm making up excuses. Right, time here is in hours, so one hour. So thinking about the, the clarity of explanation, partly is how clear the visual part of that is. Sure. Method and order. And that's really at the heart of teaching maths, especially to kids who are not that bright. Sure. So the method is what they catch from you. Yes. I think that would help you a lot. Now comes my first question. Am I traveling at the steady speed or am I, is my speed changing? Steady. It's steady, no? Who understands that? What is another word for steady? Constant. Constant. And if I'm talking about speed, I can talk about an average speed, no? Who understands the word average? So I'm run about 100 kilometers per hour. Who understands that? No, no, no. Who understands that? That's a question. Are we all, oh, you all understand. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Let's, let's just pick up on a couple of those questions. There were a number of rhetorical questions. You know what I mean by that? I know exactly what you mean. 
So you're asking a question that's almost completely redundant. Uh, who understands that? No, no one says anything. <laughs> okay. I know what you mean, yes. Right, what's happening to the time? Is the time going? Yes, yes the time is going from, in fact, an hour past. Am I right? Yes. Did the distance change? No. no. So what conclusion can you make? There must have been a stop there, no? Right. That makes sense. What conclusion can you make from what had happened? The, the question that was really going to make them think, uh, you answered it almost immediately. With, without any wait time. Now, the question was, was spot on. Accepting. The response, you, you snookered your own question because the class wasn't thinking. So the penny the penny's dropping more slowly for them than it might be in your head. You, you're racing ahead of them. I do pick it up now, yes. listening to because almost and there was a series of questions and it's almost like I didn't really wait long enough for them to yeah. assess that they do understand that. And by the time I came to the punchline, if you want to call it that, yeah. I, I did the same thing. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to draw a situation for you from five to six. Okay, I think on this clip we've got some more positive examples. Okay. Let's just have a look at those and talk through them as well. I want you to tell me if this is A, point B, C, D, and E. I want you to explain to me what happened. I want you to explain to me what happened. Good. What do you think happened? And again, look at it in terms of the distance and the time. Good. One, two, three. Good. Graham? You went back to the original spot you were. Who agrees with what he says? Who disagrees? Good. Who agrees? Why do you agree, Sia Bonga? Why? Good. And just answer the question. And where you have to work out, please show all your calculations and you're working. So just looking at that um, and trying to recap what happened. You asked the question. Mm -hmm. You allowed a, quite a considerable amount of time. You prompt them a little bit on the way. You're looking for the responses. You then get a response. Instead of saying what you did earlier in the lesson, that's right, or sometimes you actually then answered it yourself because maybe the answer was a bit soft. You asked somebody else in the classroom, did you agree with that? So that's a very good follow-up because what it's, still, it's, it's, it's leaving the, the answer out there and then you follow that up with why. So that sequence of events, uh, if you could place your pattern on that, and that's why I was saying earlier, you actually are doing it. You just, I don't think, doing it enough. Enough, yeah. I can see it now. Right. Okay, I'm going to give you a worksheet, and we're going to look at this one now. Right. We're going to do question one. You read question one in your own time, and then we start with 1.1.1. And we'll test and see One of the things that I believe is really important in right. maths teaching okay. is verbalizing the process. So you're needing to get the pupils to talk about it. So you've got 35 of them, so you can't do group work very easily, especially in those rows. But it would have been quite easy for them to work, for example, in pairs. Maybe that's a strategy you can think about. So split them in pairs and say, let's do this one, and the one talks to the other one explains it and comes back and then you take a smattering and say what was that you said do you agree with that was that right so getting a, a pupil to talk about the reason why they got to the answer how did you get to that answer what was your logical process that verbalizing reinforces now if it's wrong it gives you the opportunity to check the logic along the way and so i think that's a very valuable thing to learn that you're not doing it all let me okay there. Sure. There's one last thing. This is a little bit obscure. In a mixed classroom, I mean a co-ed classroom, mm -hmm. the classroom interaction is dominated by the males. Now, there were a few girls in this classroom, and I think on a couple of occasions you did address them. But there was almost no interaction with the girls. What I'm suggesting is that even if the class were 50-50, the same thing would have happened would have with the happened, girls. Yes. And in, in, in experiments done in, in, in mixed classrooms with female teachers, mm -hmm. the interaction is still dominated by the males. It's so just think about the girls. How, how are the girls doing? And maybe in your other classes you've got a lot more girls than you had in this one. And funny yeah. enough, the girls tend to do better yeah. than the boys, even though they participate less. But not, not that it's an excuse. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I actually realize now. It, it never caught me up until this moment. Ten, I cut ten cakes into quarters. How many pieces will I have? 
40 years. <laughs> now, Don, I'm coming along next week to look at another lesson. So we're going to have a chance to see uh, how much of what we've discussed today you can really put into practice. Yeah, thank you yeah. so much, Kevin. It really has been uh, okay, an eye-opener. Thank you. Never too old to learn, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. Kevin is back at Queen's High School. He's here to see another math lesson with Don Watson. Has Don's classroom practice improved since his mentoring session? Right. Afternoon class. Afternoon, right. First thing I want you to do for today, just write a uh, credit account. Just write there the heading credit account. Right. Give me an example of personal accounts where you buy on credit. Give me an example. Yes, Shanae. And Edgar's account. Edgar's account. Okay. That's clothing, am I right? Yeah. Okay. What happens when you apply for the clothing account? They give you a what? A card. Of course, they give you a card. Thank you, Johannes. They do give you a card. But there's a credit limit. Who can tell me why do you think they give you a credit limit? Why not let people be free to buy as much as they want to? Any of the girls? Yes, Alwanda? So that you can pay up, sir. Yeah. Also, they want to make sure that you can afford the payments. Okay, but right. look at the example that I gave you. I want you to look at it and tell me what account you think that is. Yes, Quantum? Clothing, sir. It's a clothing account. Are we all okay with that one? Yes. Right. I want you to look at the transactions and then I want you to answer the first four questions. Right. I just want you, maybe for the time being, check your answer with your neighbor. Just check your answer with your neighbor. Just double check. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. 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 This is the fourth. Yeah, it's a bit small, but it's the fourth. Okay, guys, you'll finish it off for homework and we'll mark it tomorrow, okay? All right, guys, thanks. Now you've been through your reteach lesson and it was quite obviously uh, there were many things that had changed since the previous time but I wondered what you think about what you did and then I'll maybe give you a couple of ideas. The questioning I tried to change, give more, more time and to give as many people a chance that don't normally mm. answer. Mm. Um, trying to get the girls involved. I saw that, yes, yeah, that was but, wonderful. <laughs> I tried to do that and, but give it, and also talk less. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was more comfortable going around and checking instead of doing all the talking in the front. So, and when yes. you walked around and checked, uh, what, what did you see? I could see that the kids knew what to do mm -hmm. and they were better focused on the topic. Um, so it must have yeah, that's been... that's clearly Yeah, true. because yeah. it must have been the introduction itself. Mm -hmm. And I see now where, uh, compared to the first lesson that I had, where it was a bit uh, ragged and the kids did, there were lots of gaps. This was a very factually orientated lesson. So for a lot of the questions, there's a right answer and a wrong answer. It's very hard to have an open-ended yes. debate about yes. that. But the, the question I liked, and I, I would have liked you to have extended it mm -hmm. more, because I think it's really the educative one of this whole mm -hmm. thing, maybe where you're going to on this, is why do they have a credit limit? And you got yeah. one answer, and then you gave a second answer, and then you moved on. And it was maybe your teaching opportunity in the lesson, but I think I liked the fact that you were spreading, you did definitely involve the girls, uh, you moved to working in pairs, you were moving around, their work was much better. So I think you're on the right track, and I hope that you're going to be able to, you know, think about yes. what was contributed, your own style, and maybe improve it. And I think I was a bit. You know, if I came back yeah. in a year's time, I'd see this <laughs> a questioning wonderful. whiz kid. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was a bit out of my element because it was more a head sort of teaching than a heart teaching. So I had to constantly remind myself of the points, checkpoints, you know. So, okay. But it's something I need to practice yeah. definitely. Yeah. And this whole process, how have you felt about it? You know what, as short as it was, it's, mm. it was very insightful and I mm. really think it's, it's the kind of thing lots of teachers need because you don't want to take somebody out of the classroom, have a course somewhere mm. in an isolated place. You want to do it there on hands on. Mm. And I think it's, it's definitely a, a good way of doing it. And it's small little things that make a difference. It's been valuable. I actually still need to sit, process things and implement them yeah. and make them second nature kind and of And it thing. is a yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. No, so but Don, thank, thank you very much. Well thank done. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Appreciate it being okay. a visitor in your classroom. Okay. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much, Kevin.